because most of you were Marines, but uh, but I hear that even the Air Force says that every so often. I we've all been there, guys. I mean, every fight we've ever had, every argument we've ever had, every lustful thing, and you take all of these natural so I'm gonna, we're gonna look at this and we're gonna be in verse five, but part of I'll read four, five, and six so you can see. I'm gonna read out of the New Living Translation this morning. I just got me a new Bible. I just realized Romans keep falling out of my Bible. <laughs> I told Karen the other day I went home and I picked up this new living Bible and I said, she goes, what? I said, I lost Romans. It's gone. And I didn't go find it, you know, so. And I thought, I did actually I thought, man, I lost Romans. How could this possibly be? Uh, so I had to buy me a new one. I'll use it later. I'm being very cautious. But listen to these words. So, my dear brothers, this is the point. Uh, this is verse 4. So, my dear brothers, this is the point out of the New Living Translation. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. This is the point. And now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. That's like marriage. And that's why the first part of Romans 7 is a marriage. Talking about marriage. We, we were married to the law. Now we're married to Christ. I belong to someone else. I was this, but now I am this. Okay, that's the idea. It's not, I used to believe this, and now I believe this. It's not that. It's I was this, and now I am this. I was dead, I am alive. All right? I was in darkness, now I'm in the light. I was in a sinner, I was born in it, and now I'm a saint. This is who I am. And the boast goes to God. Jesus Christ, who broke the power that no one can break. Now you can think of that. Sin is only second to God. The only one more powerful than sin is God Himself. There is anything sin doesn't control. Everything on the planet, no matter how religious you think you are, or have been, or whatever religion you've ever been in, or whatever thought you have, I mean, sin in any is controlled. But here's, here's what is going to happen. God is going to take us down the throat that I have been made a new creation and uh, Pastor Mike is going to be preaching on the I guess so am I. going to be preaching on the in February when he's in Ethiopia with uh, Dr. Warren Franklin. And he's going to be doing leadership over there. But they're going to be speaking and he will be praying for them all the God. They're going to be speaking to over 4,000 church leaders. I mean, isn't that just amazing? They're going to be after you'll speak at a leadership conference with over 4,000 Ethiopians. And then, praise God for that. But he's been talking about this, how sanctification and holiness is a journey. It's, all, it's already what I am, but now it's a journey. And I'm growing in all the days of my life. So, now, let me finish these, this particular scripture. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. When we were controlled by our old nature, Sinful desires were at work within us. And the law, the, the, the thing that says don't, <laughs> aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds, which were all filled with condemnation, resulting in death. But now we have been released from the law, for we died to it and are no longer captive here is by, to its power. Now we can serve God, not under the old way, by trying to obey some letter of the law, but in a new way, by living in the Spirit. So you begin to look at this and who are we? What are we? You've got to, if, if you knew you were dead in your sin, if you knew this was my nature, if you knew that even the natural desire God gave to me gets perverted, I couldn't stop the perversion. I couldn't stop it from being perverted. Every man on the planet has a natural desire. He gets a natural desire. He wants to, he wants to grow. He wants to become a man. He's growing up. He wants to get married. He wants, he wants to fall in love. There is a desire for a physical relationship. And then all of it, all along the journey, the natural desire got perverted. There's a desire that a family wants to stay together. Every kid I've ever met, I don't care if he has the worst father on the planet, he still wants his mom and dad to stay together. But sin perverts the marriage. I never did love you anyway. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. 
counseling with some couple that's having a major malfunction. They said, well, I never loved him anyway. Well, I never loved her anyway. Well, why'd you get married? I mean, I look back at that, and so you begin to, when you go through this, and we have to know there were certain things that were true of us so that I can get to that which I now am. See, I've been, to, and to get to six where I've been released from the power, I've been released. I've got to know that there's some, that I am someone else. Let us remember that Paul, and by the way, Paul, when he's writing the Romans, he's speaking to people who have already, in the process of being conformed to the new nature, they've already received Christ. And he's telling them something, because we're going to get to that part later in this chapter where it says, I never do what I, I say, this is what I want to do, but I don't get it done. Then I tell myself, what I don't want to do, I keep doing. And then at the end, it says, who will rescue me? Who's going to rescue me? And it's be thanks to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. But if I don't know that, I'm still, what's going to happen? You're going to come to the back of others, you're going to remain the same. You're still going to be condemning yourself. You're still going to have this, this, this ache in your soul for condemnation about you and others. You're going to really easily do that. In fact, I'm going to share with you right at the end of this, a, a, a friend of mine, his name is Tom Tompkins. And uh, he was one of our elders in Tucson. And, and uh, just a great man of God, a retired doctor, uh, pediatrician. And, and uh, he heard me preach this so many years ago. And then he wrote, he said, God gave me something. And I, I wrote it down. I asked his permission if I could share it with you guys. So I'm going to give it to you in a moment. But so uh, let's look at this deal. What, what does sin do? When you look at the New Living Translation, it says, For when we were controlled by the sinful nature, when we were controlled, the sinful passions aroused by us were at work in our bodies. They were at work in our bodies. And so what happens? When I, so how, how does a man, what breaks addiction? What, what, is, what breaks it? <laughs> I mean, you go to counseling? I mean, how, a lot of guys go to counseling. I've heard a lot of people go to counseling. By the way, you get to pay for that. <coughs> Did you notice that? <laughs> it's not cheap. I have a nephew that has been to counseling three times for drugs, and my, my sister and her husband have spent over $450,000 in those counseling centers. $450,000. And he's still addicted. There's not a thing to change. What breaks the addiction? What, what is it? Is it a police system? Is that I need some kind of, I, I need to rework something in me? Because most counseling and all the things you go to are behavior modification. Behavior modification does not give you a new nature. If, if sin is what God says it is, that it's all powerful, and that only his son can break it, that I will send a redeemer, and his name will be Emmanuel, he will be the almighty God. If, if the Lucifer went to him and said, listen, if you are the son of God, if you are, and then Patrick says, listen, bow down to me and I'll give all this to you. If this, this one, if it's so powerful and it's only second to God, how do you think that you're going to get into some modification to regroup yourself? We need a complete transformation of a new mind, a complete new nature, and I must believe God for it. That's why Christ died. That's why when you have communion, you declare the Lord's death until he comes. Why? I declare the Lord died for my sin, and I died with him. To its power. It's not its presence. It is clearly present still in me. I get to repent on a regular basis. <laughs> Praise God. And without condemnation. So you begin to look at this. See the term. When I was formerly this, I am now this. That's what the whole, the whole gist of, of verse 5 is about. So. When we were controlled by our own nature, sinful desires were at work within us. When I was controlled. Are the desires still there? Well, yes. But get this. A lot of the desires that are still there are natural. Desires that God gave 
the sin wants to pervert. So when you think of, you think of, uh, let me take you to first Tim, back to First Timothy there. The Spirit clearly says that in the latter times some will abandon the faith. What faith? That Jesus Christ died for me. That it's over. I'm not on a self-improvement deal. There's nothing I can do. I can live now for the glory of God all the time. And they will follow deceiving spirits, things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose conscience have been seared with a hot iron. They forbid marrying people to marry in order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. So what happens? People come into a belief system. They say they believe in Christ. They seem to take it by faith and then go on to self-improvement program. And they're going, to, they're going to work on themselves because they feel condemned still. Now, if Christ did not, did not lie, it says not hyphen and jive here, he says, therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation, the old is gone. What's the old? The old, the power of sin is over in your life. <coughs> well, how do you know that? Because God said so. Everything that is not a faith is sin. How do you know the addiction is over? The power of the addiction is over. Because God said so. I stand on what he said. That's what it is to be a faith. But when you look at this, what, did they, what happened with the Galatians? They, they believed all the right things. They were told not to get married anymore. Why? Because in that day, they thought of this. The, the desire to have a physical relationship with your wife was a, the desire of sin. No, it was a natural desire that God gave. But sin would pervert it. And so then also, then stay away from food. Stay away from wine. Why? When I, when I first came to Christ, my wife and I first came to Christ, it was the weirdest thing we'd ever seen. Now remember, we're two pagan people raised in California. Okay? We met in a nightclub. Okay? We met in a nightclub. And in nightclubs, they dance and they drink. So that's how we met. We get married, we come to Christ, he's in our life, and the first thing that happens is we go to, well, we now know, heard we're supposed to go to church. So we go to church. We didn't know we were supposed to go to church. And what do we hear? We go to church and we hear, number one, never drink. Never dance. Never play cards. Don't go to movies. Don't have hair touching the top of your ear of a man. Don't have a skirt on a woman with above the knee. That'd be below the knee. That means Karen had to buy all new clothes. <laughs> she was 21 years old. And back in those days, they had these mini skirts. Not that one, they were right there. <laughs> I thought, I said, why do you think I'm not lovely? I mean, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, what did I hear? I was being told all the things of a don't. And I never heard about grace. I never heard about the freedom. I never heard about guts. You were an old sinner. Now you're a saint. I didn't know what to say. They still went to the church telling you you're still a sinner. They didn't tell me how to turn into a man of God. I found that out by myself. <laughs> reading the Word of God, when all of a sudden I'm on my own reading, I'm a new creation. I remember. Of course, you can imagine me being an example. It's like, I mean, I, I do this at home with Kara. I'm a new creation. The old is gone. I don't know what it is, but it's gone. And, and I don't know what the old really was, except maybe the desire for sin, but I want a desire for God, and I want to do for the glory of God. He told me whatever I eat and drink or whatever I do, I can do for his glory. Honey, that means we can go to a dance for his glory. That means I can have a glass of wine again for his glory. That means I didn't know what was going on. And I, I, and I would tell I can wipe my heart in for the glory of God. Does it get any better than that? No. 
See, if we don't understand this basics, that I've been set free from the power, not its presence. If I'm not set free from the power, if God didn't set me free the, from the death and resurrection of Christ, if he didn't set me free from his power, then I'm still living with addiction. And my number one addiction is condemnation. Over me, therefore it's over you. It always condemns somebody else. Always has a ridiculing spirit. Always gets irritated. Here's what my friend Tom Tompkins said. I want to read to you. It's about the rule of grace. What does grace do in the human soul? And he talks about the rule of grace as a word picture for us to use in many contexts. Our family, our church, our community, our friends. The key element is our full acceptance and understanding. Our full acceptance and understanding of God's reaching into our lives with the full, the full pardon of our sins. The full pardon. If we don't get that, we've still got your pardon. The full pardon is over. The addiction is over. The power is over. I got this. I broke it. I tell you, I broke it. And I've given you that. I broke it power in you. You were married to it. Now you're married to me. You were dead, but now you're alive in me. You were dark. Now you're all light all the time in me. Now watch this. This is so beautiful. Sin that the, and he broke, re, he reached into our lives in the full part of our sin. Sin that deserves our going to hell for eternity. That's how powerful sin is. <clears throat> he broke his power, and it's a sin that should have put me in hell for eternity. He broke his power. Now watch that. There is no longer any condemnation by each person toward himself or others. As each person fully lives in the extended grace given freely through Jesus Christ's death on the cross. And not based on any action he has done or any attitude he has. For any attitude of, or action that he has by his own nature deserves to go to hell. So he has a new one in Christ. Then the gratefulness of this action by God gives each person the gracious spirit toward themselves and others. Now notice, a gracious spirit. What do you mean? You're thankful for each other. You're not irritated by somebody. You're thank There's a graciousness. What has God done for you? I'm released from a power that I could not be released from. From a perversion I could not get away from. And then he goes, I cannot overemphasize the importance of each person fully accepting who he was a sinner chained to sin, and now who he is, a saint chained to follow Christ. And then he says, totally because of Jesus Christ's mercy and grace. That graciousness can now be extended to all other relationships because it was extended to you first. And then he is asked to forgive in another is much less than what Jesus forgave in him. Amen. 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 Good. Men of God, this is, this is what it's meant to be. A new nature on a new year on the third day. You've got to know this. You've got to know this. And if you know this, you're going to rejoice. There's something that's going to be, there's going to be a thankfulness in you that you cannot hold down. You cannot contain it. Go home and give it away. And I'm going to tell you what, give, give graciousness away to everyone. And some people, they won't receive it. Some people will still treat you in a less than stellar way. That's not their, your problem. That's it. May God overwhelm you. Now here's the deal. Can you look up and thank God? Can you look up and say thank God? Do you, can you just do that? Can you thank God? Thank you. Start the new year. Who are you? I'm a man of God. Who are you? Oh, this will blow your hair back. I'm a saint. Who made you this? Jesus Christ. I've been set free from the power of sin, not set free from its presence. That day is on its way. Okay? It's on its way, but it's not here yet. But I have been set free from its power, and I know it because of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Very fun. I'm